I'd like to welcome you to our August Ask the Director meeting. And um, I know there was a change in the schedule, and that was primarily due to me wearing a mask. And I didn't want to have to be at the monthly meeting wearing a mask, and my last day of mask wearing was yesterday. So hence the reason uh, for changing the, the, uh, the meeting. It's really hard for people to hear you when you have a mask on, so that's why we changed the meeting. I want to um, start off by uh, recognizing our Act Signature Experience Team Player of the Month for August, and this is an employee that many of you might not know because they work in the kitchen. Um, but our Act Signature Experience Team Player of the Month is Medi Jocks. Um, he is a sanitation team member. He's been part of our team since October of 18, and he works as a, as a sanitation utility worker. Um, he's a hard worker, very dedicated, and he does just about any job that we need him to do in the kitchen. Uh, of course, we all know that their job is essential, and we're very grateful he's part of our team. Um, so if you know Maddie, please, um, please uh, congratulate him. You probably don't know him because he's in, behind the scenes. And, it, you know, it's unfortunate because we have so many behind the scenes team members that residents don't necessarily get to know. But we recognize their hard work, and so we are recognizing Medi uh, for the Act Signature Experience Team Player of the Month. Now, I want to, I was kind of waiting um, to jump to the photo I have here. Give me a second. Um, last night, uh, Alzheimer's Association had a special dinner. And and they uh oh, hold on. Oh no, dinner just a pizza. Okay, well I I consider that a dinner in my world. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, long story short, as you know, we raised over seven thousand dollars for the longest day back in June, and uh, Mary Lou and Kathy um, and um, Ellen went to the appreciation pizza celebration. And then many of you know Oris Martin. Um, she was also there. Oris Martin is our former fitness director that was here for about five years at Edgewater. She's now over at St. Andrews Estates. But um, both St. Andrews and Edgewater were recognized for their contributions. And um, of course, we wanted Mary Lou and Kathy to celebrate because they were the um, the rocks, if you will, in making sure the the uh, fun the Mary Lou goes the rocks um, in making sure the fundraiser was a hit, and so Ellen invited them to attend. But we received um, several awards. We had a top fundraiser award. <clears throat> We, now, this says number six fundraising team. What does that mean? Okay, great. So out of the top ten Southeast fundraisers, we were number six. And the top was 32,000. And then we received a work, work, I can't say that, Rookie of the Year fundraiser award because I think it was our first year in a long time that we've done that. So we received that award as well. So just wanted to share um, some great news to you and thank you, Mary Lou. Oh, I don't know if I, did I have that one? Hundred and seventeen here, and we we got that award. Okay, we had the most individual awards here at Edgewater. Great job, thank you. Hundred and seventeen donors. 
Okay, so just wanted to share that. And of course, last night, um, Ellen sent me a text with this photo. And, and you know, Oris, for those of you who know Oris, she's very c competitive. But, <laughs> but, she's, but she told Ellen, oh, I'm not competitive. So I text, I text Ellen back, and I said, don't believe her. <laughs> so also, just funny side note, El Oris mentioned she's going to raise $10,000 next year. And Ellen um, said to, back to her, we're going to raise $10,001. <laughs> So the competition is on, and uh, I'm sure we'll meet the $10,000 um, goal for next year. But thank you all who participated and who made donations. It really does make a difference, and it's nice that we're participating. Okay, and so I guess there's a volleyball competition between St. Andrews and Edgewater. Is it here or at St. Andrews? I think it's here. Okay. Okay, October. So we have time to, to practice and win. And then there's a competition. And uh, there's a bridge competition in September. St. Andrews is hosting. We're not competitive, are we? <laughs> so anyhow, it'll be fun. It's, um, it's family competition. Uh, we know who's best, and we plan on winning. So <laughs> with that, we'll move along. Um, I wanted to um, talk about the captain's table also. Um, that I think we had a lot of fun the other night. Thank you very much. Um, a special thank you to Mary Lou, uh, Kathy, and Celia for really spearheading it, overseeing it. Also, Ellen, um, Darren, Timothy, Dawn, and the entire culinary team uh, for making the event very special. So we're, we're having a lot of fun things, and uh, it's nice that we're getting back to a normal lifestyle. Now, I want to talk about Vimeo. Vimeo is going to become our new... Um, in-house channel, if you will. So channel 95 will be going away, but Vimeo will take its place, and it will provide a better resident digital experience, both live streaming and recorded. Um, and you'll be able, it's sort of like Hulu or Netflix. If you have Hulu or Netflix, you'll, you'll go into that Vimeo, program, and you'll be able to watch live stream events as well as anything recorded in, in that channel. So if you're familiar with Netflix and Hulu, you would be able to navigate very easily. Now, when we do this, when we go to change our in-house um, cable channel, we will obviously teach. We'll have um, tech, uh, IT cafes, so we'll have technical cafes, will help you learn how to get to that channel. There is one drawback, which no one's going to like, but I'm going to throw it out now. Um, we will no longer be able to uh, stream movies on this um, channel, and that's because of licensing costs. It's just too costly. So when we have a movie, you'll have to come to um, the auditorium to watch a movie. And really, the goal is to have you come to, to the auditorium so that after the movie's over, maybe you can discuss it and have social time with your neighbors and friends. So that is the one drawback. But other than that, I think it will be a better platform and residents will be able to um, go in there. Things will be recorded. So for example, the resident board meetings can, can be there for maybe six months, so you can go back to an old board meeting, or anything we record, we can keep on the channel site for a longer period of time, and you'll be able to then um, go back if you want to watch something that was um, promoted or presented. Any questions on that? It, yes, it's, a audio, it's just like in-house channel, but it's not Channel 95. Yes, Elliot? So the current event, the current calendar we have now. So
So that's a loaded question. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but um, we will talk about K4 and ECHO next, and K4 will have the calendar. So we'll, I'll talk about that after Vimeo questions are... are um, I don't have a date. So the question is, when will Vimeo be introduced? I do not have a date yet. There's um, some government... So, so there's a governance committee being establishing so that as an acts family, we have we're going to government ourselves, govern ourselves, and have you know guidelines for the in-house channels. So there, that part hasn't taken place yet. So it's going to be rolled out later. I'm just giving you a preview to the future. Yes, Joyce. Has there been a station number allocated already? <laughs> It won't be a station number because it, it, do you have Netflix? Yes. So you know how you change your HDMI yes. to net to that um, HDMI? You'll have an HDMI for this. Okay. So we will teach anyone who is not familiar with Netflix, I promise you. It's very set up just like net, Netflix. Okay. Um, so then. Going to K4 and Echo, I mentioned this last month, um, but K4 is going to be a new app that you can actually have on your desktop, your laptop, or even on your phone. Some of you might be familiar with the resident portal. I know we don't use it that much here on campus, but it's going to replace the resident portal. And um, you'll be able to go in there and make dining reservations. You'll be able to see the menu. You'll be able to see the nutritional fat um, breakdown of the meal that you might be eating. So you can actually see the fat content, the cholesterol, whatever the nutritional um, information is on that menu item. And you'll be able to talk to your neighbors and friends. You'll be able to, to chat with them on this app. We will have lots of training, and uh, DeAndre, we're so grateful that you're here um, with us, and we're grateful you're in the IT position. Um, I think he has such patience, <laughs> um, because I know that when I'm technically challenged, I need someone with a lot of patience, so we appreciate your patience. Um, but DeAndre is going to walk us through and get us to the finish line so that we we all know how to use the app. So the K4 app will replace the resident portal, it will have the menus, it will have the events of the day and at your fingertips. So you can go on your phone and actually access it. Now along with that, you're gonna get an echo. Who has an echo in the room? Okay, so this echo will only be for Edgewater. So you won't be able to like call a friend outside of Edgewater there, but you can call the front desk on it. If you fell and you didn't have your pendant alarm, you could say echo, call the front desk, and then you can let us know that you've fallen. Um, so the um, echo and the K4 are gonna roll out together. That's going to likely happen in October. So I'll talk about it again next month Hopefully I'll have a date. And then when you come to that meeting in October, we'll actually have your ECHO programmed for you and you'll take it home. But we'll have instructions during that meeting and then we'll have follow-up tech cafes to teach people as they get accustomed to it. Helene? Yeah, how do you get the ECHO? So AXE is purchasing all the ECHOs and they're, come, they're gonna be shipped here. I be Thank believe they'll be programmed by person, okay. and then you'll you'll be given your own personal um, echo, and away you go. I mean, we'll teach you though too. It's like an Alexa, I think. I don't have either one, so I'm gonna learn with you. I don't know. The question is, is it the small echo or the big echo? I'm not sure. 
I, don't, I really don't know the size of it, but it will be primarily, it will be only used for Edgewater business. Okay. Okay, it looks like a pancake and it could be four inches diameter or six. So it's not large. Okay. It has to be plugged in, yes. <clears throat> okay, I want to share some um, interesting facts about our team members because, you know, we do monthly, we have a monthly team member town hall. And so every month we have a 6.30 a.m. Um, uh, employee town hall. We have a 1.30 p.m. and a 3.30 p.m. So we're trying to touch bases with full-time employees primarily once a month. And I come in, Barnabas comes in, Melissa, she was in here, Willowbrook Court Administrator, she comes in, and we have these meetings. And so this week, George Bryan was here um, along with our HR manager, Casey Fitzpatrick, and then we also had David Vega, who is the Vice President Operations Analysis and Compliance. Essentially, David's role in the organization is to oversee corporate compliance, because that's really a big deal um, in corporate America today, and making sure that we're um, not um, conducting business poor business practices, there's no fraud, waste, or abuse. And so uh, David came along with HR, Casey, and George, who all, everyone knows, our regional vice president, and we had our meetings on Wednesday. And during those meetings, the topics were um, living and working together, the rules of engagement, so in other words, are how we should behave appropriately within your home. So that was the topic. Um, we had some human resource updates on benefits and different things that are available to team members. And then we talked about corporate compliance and why that's important. We touched on sexual harassment. We talked about Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, a lot of different topics um, we shared with the team, our team members. And I'm just sharing with you because I want you to feel good, as I do, that acts reinvest back into the team, meaning myself and the rest of the team that works here. And um, we have a lot of opportunities to grow professionally and um, just want to share that we do a lot of nice things for our team members. Um, Edgewater will have our service awards on September 6th. That's going to involve closing the dining room for that night. We will have a probably a buffet luncheon that day for you, or the bistro at night will be open. But during that service award celebration, we'll be honoring um, employees, team members who are celebrating milestone um, anniversaries. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40 years will be honored. Um, in addition, the Southeast Regional Office and Axe Home Health, they celebrate here at, at Edgewater. Um, so they'll be part of, that's okay, um, they'll be part of the celebration as well. So on September um, 6, we will be closing the dining room. Any questions on that? Okay. <clears throat> I want to shout out a special, some kudos. Um, we, had a, uh, we had a small fire. Uh, some of you watched the fire, right? So we had a special um, celebration, anniversary celebration. I believe it was in this room. And a sterno accidentally fell over and started a small little fire on a tablecloth. But not to worry, um, Kenny and Piper in the culinary department reacted very quickly. Uh, Kenny actually extinguished the fire. It set the alarms off. Fire department came. Um, 
But I just want to share, because many of you know Kenny and Piper, when you see them, um, you know, brag about them, because they really did handle the episode very well. And we'll be making sure that all the team members during next month's um, leadership team meetings with the um, staff, we'll, we'll make sure people know how to use an extinguisher because that's what they did. They, they used it properly and the small fire was extinguished. So when you see Kenny and Piper, uh, please uh, let them know. I also want to um, brag about Nigel um, Long. Do you know Nigel? Okay, so um, I had a nurse in Willowbrook Court um, take the time to send me an email about him. Apparently last week um, a family member was, was really interested in having a recliner brought to the Willowbrook Court room and he got right on top of it. He, he found a recliner, brought it to the room and then he also was answering call lights. He had TV issues going on and he was just right there, Johnny on the spot, um, making sure Willowbrook Court residents and their needs were being met. And I mention it because um, you, you might not see some of these things that some of the staff members are doing. So when you see Miguel, he's on vacation, but when he comes back, um, please say, oh, I hear you, you are doing great things around campus. Okay, let me just see what else we have to talk about. Oh, one last um, thing I want to brag about, and this is related to Susan Bradley as well as the hiring managers. So every month we get a report that shows how long it takes to hire someone. So from the day of the application to the day of hire, how long that takes. Would anyone care to guess what that, how many days that might be? Two weeks, I heard three months, six weeks. So, you know, today it's very different than probably 20 years ago when people didn't have background checks, they didn't have to have fingerprints, they didn't have to have a health screening. All of those things delay, if you will. We do drug testing. All, all of those items delay the process of getting people hired. So that's why it takes a little longer. But I just want to brag on our team because we are the second shortest um, community in Axe family. Um, it takes us about 27 days um, to hire an employee. And that's, um, we're the second shortest time. There's one other community that's uh, ahead of us. Um, but that takes a lot of effort on Susan's part as well as the hiring managers and they are really interested in being fully staffed. I'm pleased to share that we have no full-time positions open right now. Now of course we'll, we're celebrating that this week but things could change and we might have a full-time position next week um, as people retire or leave um, the organization. But we are fully staffed with the exception of part-time and per diem um, staff members. So very happy about that. We had some um, cooks. It took us a while to hire some full-time cooks and we finally got all those positions filled and now we are fully staffed. Any questions on those topics? Here, Carol. Oh, okay. I'd like to bring out a point that I was really surprised about. Can any, everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, I just found out that McDonald's pays their workers $22 an hour. And my pataya just told me this because she's trying to hire someone to be a secretary and she cannot get anyone to come work for her because she can't afford to pay that kind of salary. So you have to understand why we're understaffed with the children, I want to say young people, not children, young people that work here and that you have to be patient because these kids can go to McDonald's, Burger King, these kind of places and make way more money than a place like Axe could afford to pay 16, 17, 18 year olds. So I think that this is 
good information. I hope you Great. understand it. Thank you. And, and we have, you know, a lot of good benefits. We try, of course, we have the Edgewater Scholarship um, Fund, which is excellent. All of you contribute to that. We also have um, corporate um, scholarships and tuition reimbursement. So we try to appeal to younger um, staff members by appealing to the benefits, not just the hourly wage. But And we do find that we do recruit a lot of students who are going off to college uh, or who are living and working um, here locally and going to college locally. So we try to attract um, those individuals who see the benefit of tuition reimbursement as well. But we are competing with some tough dollars, you're correct. Okay, um, Comcast. We've had some issues recently. <laughs> And I just uh, want to share that it's not just here at Edgewater. It's it's region, you know, it's locally based. So there's been area wide outages, and I know Marty lives close by. She was out with um, without Comcast, and so it's not something in our building per se. It's it's area wide, but some some residents were upset with us, and I just want to share that we have very. <laughs> little control when it's an area-wide outage. Our um, Jewish holidays are coming up in September, and there is a um, a flyer. I think it's posted, but um, I don't know if the sign-up sheets are out yet for the dinners. But um, because of the large interest here at Edgewater, outside families and guests will not be able to attend the dinners, but just wanted to... to explain why it's because we have such a large group that will be attending the dinners. Helene? I just want to say that I, I would encourage everyone to call Comcast and ask for a credit. I called and I got a $20 credit off my bill for the day that we didn't have the phone, internet, television. And then I also mentioned that it happened a couple of times before but only for four hours at a time. I didn't give them the exact date. They have records, they can look it up. And as I said, they gave me a $20 credit on my bill. Great, nice. Thank you, Helene. Okay, and you, you saw that some storms are brewing out there. There's uh, Tropical Storm Franklin, but it looks like it's gonna stay at bay, so we're not affected. But the storms are starting to brew. September is probably going to be active. So now is the time to make sure you have your hurricane supplies and, and you know, whatever you need medically. Just make sure you have all those supplies. Stephanie, did you have something to add? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that our RA. <coughs> oh, it's on here. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. So the summer, summer Sorwick, I can't say that word, Sorwick, okay, you got it. Um, that was scheduled for our August 31st is now September 7th, and that's because there was a conflict with a movie outing. And then we also do the Acts Engaged Living training, and that's for to help us um, help those living with dementia in our community. We train the employees every month. Stephanie and Nadia are the, the trainers. It's really great information. Even if you don't have dementia or you don't have a spouse with dementia, it's nice to know there's different tools and tips you can use when you have a friend who maybe suddenly is changing. Um, and that's every month and we, we put it on the calendar and all residents are invited. Some residents do attend and I think they get a lot out of it. Um, but the team members are required to attend. And then also on September 15th, we're having a virtual tour, which is an auditorium, and set up by an outside vendor. 
um, September 15th from 10 to 3 in the auditorium. We're going to be setting it up in different sections, and there's going to be 15-minute uh, increments for people to sign up to go through the tour. And it's, um, it's held by a company that makes us go through it to have empathy for people living with dementia. And they'll have you walk through different stations. And I don't want to give away all the, all the tricks of it, but it's very interesting. And it's going to be, um, we're going to have a sign-up sheet. And it's from 10, at the main bulletin board. We're, that's the day that they gave us. I know it's Rosh Hashanah, but we're doing it during the day, and Rosh Hashanah is in the evening at sundown. So Rosh Hashanah is actually Saturday the 16th. So it wasn't conflicting with Rosh Hashanah, but that was the date that the county gave us. We're, this isn't funded by us. It's funded by the county. Anything about the... I think it's called the Life Vac or Vac Life that we talked about the other day. Did you look into it? Okay. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. All right. Um, so Willowbrook Core is hard um, at work right now. Just to share, we have annual competencies for all um, caregivers. So that's nurses and CNAs. And they have to um, actually go through annual competency training every year. And we're in the process of working on that. Just wanted to share that with you. Uh, the A building, card and billiards room, the floor is being replaced. August 28th and 29th. So those rooms will be closed on August 28th and 29th. If you do, if you play cards or use the pool table, um, it will not be available. So just so you're aware, we were gonna put a sign up, probably Marty already did it because she's Johnny on the spot. Signs are up, thank you. Okay, and then, um, Related to A building, uh, some of you who live in A building, we have two chairs and a, um, an end table that will be placed in the lobby from City Furniture. And then we ordered five benches for city, from City Furniture. One will be placed by the main elevator to replace the one that doesn't match that's sitting there. And then the other four, actually, I think we ordered six, the other five will be placed on the corner in the hallways as you walk down towards the main um, clubhouse because those hallways are so long. So we've ordered some additional benches and then the two chairs and a table for the main lobby. That lobby is small, so we couldn't buy a lot, of, um, a lot of furniture, but that's what's coming for a building. Um, I would say probably two or three weeks. It's, it doesn't take long. If they're on back order, I'll let you know. I'll give you an update, but I wouldn't think more than two or three weeks. Okay, um, Christmas in July. I wanted to um, share that we had the fundraiser, and we raised over $3,400 um, that day. Part of it will go to the Samaritan Fund, and another part will go to the Enrichment Fund. Um, I want to thank the resident volunteers who helped. Helene, thank you very much. Um, Alice, is Alice here? Stroll? No. Mary Lou, thank you. Um, and the decorating committee was also involved. And of course, Alicia Silvers. So thank you, everyone um, who participated. And if I miss someone, my apologies. Um, those are the, the individuals that I'm aware of. There probably are other people who volunteered that day, but I don't have them on my list. Sheila, you volunteered. I remember seeing you. Thank you. Okay. Um, debit and charge card payment options are available in the bistro, bistro. You probably already know that, but just in case you don't go to the bistro often, if you have a guest, they can always pay directly by debit card or credit card. Um, we're working on getting an audiology service here on campus. We're going to have two different um, companies that will come out, and Melissa from Willowbrook Court is working on one, and I'm working on the other one, Royal Palm Hearing Aids. Um, I know many of you use them, and they'll come out to do services on, on site. So we're working on that. <clears throat> 
We're still struggling with residents who will agree to the annual wellness clinic visit. It's very important um, to, to have that visit. Please consider changing your mind if, if you are not interested. Um, pendant alarms. So we, a lot of times a resident will fall and when we get to the apartment, we, they, they don't have their pendant alarm on or they forgot to use it. I just wanted to remind you that the pendant alarms do work. You have to just press them for like two to five seconds and then we are alerted. We usually will call your apartment first and um, if you answer and say it was a false alarm, then we don't send the nurse. Um, but if you don't answer or you do answer and say it's an emergency, we will show up at your door. Um, so just want to remind you, encourage you to use the pendant alarms. Any questions on that? We get a lot of false alarms because people accidentally bump into them, but that's okay. Um, we check everyone out, uh, you know, every false alarm out, um, but we do get accidental pushing of the pendant alarms. It typically doesn't work outside. So your best bet if you're going to your car or leaving the property is to have your cell phone handy so in the event you had a fall outside, you could quickly call either 911 if it's a true emergency or call mm -hmm us and call our main number. Yeah. How, how often should you check your pendant alarm? Years ago, the nurse would come to your apartment and they would check to make sure that your pendant alarm was working. How often should you check it? Okay, so the system is a smart system. In other words, it, go, it sends a, um, a signal to each pendant. And if the, I believe it's daily. And if that pendant has a low battery, we get a report that your pendant has a low battery. Um, or if it's not working, if the pendant's not receiving the signal, we get a report and then we check on that. But some residents feel more comfortable that periodically they might call down and say, I'm gonna push my pendant alarm, I just wanna make sure it works. That's fine too. Um, you, it's not necessary to do it, but for you know, comfort, you want to make sure, by all means, you can just call downstairs and say, I'm going to push my pendant. It's just to check it and make sure it works. And we'll, we're happy to confirm it came through. We, get, we have two or three pagers that we have, and um, the nurse's page, security is page, and then we know exactly um, the proximity of your location. So if you're in your apartment, it's going to show you're in the apartment, if you're down in the dining room, it'll give us a general vicinity of your location. Elliot. I wanna remind people that in addition to this uh, alarm, there are also throughout the building uh, uh, switches on the wall that state alert that also gives it immediately, and especially in the lavatories, uh, those are there, that uh, the nurse knows immediately that there is an emergency in there. Thank, that's a great point. Thank you, Elliot. So let's say someone here is having a choking episode. It might be better to push the button on the wall because the nurse will know exactly that someone in this room needs help. So if you're in a common area, instead of pushing your button, if you can push the, the wall one. So when you go to the dining room tonight, look around, see where the red alerts are. When you come up here, the, the red alert's right there. There might, there's one in the back. Um, you know, get to know your surroundings and know where those red alerts are located. Now, sometimes a resident will, um, push their button for another resident. So now we're looking, I'm gonna just throw out Helene's name. This is made up. So Helene's in the dining room, she's with Mrs. Jones, she's having a choking episode. Helene pushes her button, and now we're looking for Helene. Well, as long as Helene doesn't leave that resident, all is good. But the minute that resident moves, we're looking for the wrong person. So if you, 
push your button, but it's your friend you're with who's having the episode, please stay with that friend because we're going to be looking for you, not your friend. Um, if you can push their button, push their button. If you can't, push your button. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, I think I mentioned this last week, but we do have a phone here. It's in the back of the room. So, for example, at night, sometimes our technology doesn't work, and I know that's very frustrating, especially if you're counting on a very special event and it's not working. But if you should have a problem, you can always use the phone in the back to call security and let them know we need help upstairs to, with technology. So we just recently added the phone. Um, recently, we had a sales and marketing survey that was sent out to residents asking for volunteers who might be interested in supporting sales and marketing. And we had over 60 residents respond in favor of helping. So we really appreciate that. Just want to thank those of you who are planning on um, helping us out. It really makes such a difference when uh, prospective residents meet um, current residents and they get to know and feel what, this, what the community is all about. We had ballroom dancing the other day. Was that yesterday? And it was a marketing event, but we invited residents and residents who came told me how much fun it was and so I think we might try to do something in the future but just wanted to um, express my appreciation for those of you who attended because it really does help in our marketing efforts. Recycling efforts, thank you for recycling. If you have uh, private help or private duty aides who come to the apartment, please show them how to recycle as well. Sometimes we will find the wrong things in the wrong boxes in the closet, and I suspect that's not the residents. I suspect it's more um, private individuals who are being hired to support residents in their home. I want to ask Carol uh, if she would give us an update on the uh, the new light that will be coming our way. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Susan. All right. So, from the Palm Beach County Traffic Department and the project manager, this is the information that I have. Okay. Now, when they came here and did their demonstration, they projected that the traffic light would be installed by the end of December, approximately but perhaps there could be problems, and there were problems. They have been working for three months now trying to find a clearing because the poles that they put in, which are actually called mass arms, are massive, and they needed a, a very, very large on all four corner clearings to be able to not you know, touch any kind of utility lines, concrete line, any other kind of lines like uh, water lines. You wouldn't want one of our water pipes or your cable to be broken. So they had to be very careful. Once they found the, the four clearings, then they had to re redesign everything. And then they had to go to the owner of the development across the street, to us, and to Vocal Point Community Association and get everything re-signed off. So it has been time consuming to do that. But now that they have everything finalized and approved, they will now order the mass arms. Now, there is uh, good news and bad news. The good news is that they've ordered those mass arms. However, the concrete to, to make them and the people that can work on it to make them, there is a shortage. So um, they're hoping because they do believe that the shortage will soon come to an end and that they will get it done between six and eight months. So everybody has been asking me, so now I want everybody to know what's gonna happen. This, they're doing the best that they can do. They're very aware of the situation and we have to be patient. So I just wanna tell everybody, when you go out of here, be very cautious, turn right if you're going to go out of here and not try to cross over and just drive safely. So thank you all for being patient, bye. 
Okay, thank thanks, you. Carol, for the update. I know we were initially told by by the end of the year, obviously that's not gonna happen, and um, we received information directly from the county, and um, so Carol was our ambassador and, and received the information and, and wanted to share it, so thank you. Cheryl, um, our nurse practitioner, she will be um, going on vacation. I, I don't have the dates in front of me, but when she is out, we have Susan Davis, who's our nurse practitioner. She's like a part-time nurse practitioner that works here in St. Andrews and sometimes at Indian River to fill in. So she'll be helping to fill in when Cheryl's on vacation. Um, I don't have her specific dates, but it is coming up in the near future. <clears throat> COVID um, guidelines, residents kind of asked me to talk about COVID. Obviously, we, you know, the pandemic is over, but we still have COVID cases. We um, ask that if you feel sick, that you, you know, stay home and take care of yourself, but also prevent the spread of either a bad cold or COVID. Um, we can test you for COVID, so that's not a problem. And if you don't have COVID, but you have a cold, consider using masks during that time. Uh, but we do ask you to quarantine if you are pretty ill or if you have COVID. Any questions on that? We no longer announce the number of cases we have on property. Um, we need to get back to just a normal way of life. We don't announce flus, how many people have the flu or who has pneumonia. We don't announce all of that. And so we, we have made a decision collectively, acts communities have made a decision not to announce the number of COVID cases. Any comments or questions? If someone tests positive for COVID, how long do they have to stay quarantined in their apartment? Huh. So I, th I let me see if I have that here handy. I, I usually defer to Cheryl, our nurse practitioner. Every, um, everyone that has COVID, employees included, I recently had COVID for the first time. I called Cheryl, told her I had COVID. She told me how long I needed to stay out and then what the protocols were when I came back, including wearing the mask. And that's why I had a mask on for so long, even though I was no longer contagious. That's part of the policy. So I, I really uh, defer to Cheryl because she, she ends up receiving the latest practices that acts across every community is, um, is following. But let me see if I have the information handy. Um, residents isolate for five days initially, but they're usually not negative by day five. So day five is, so the day of your positive test is day zero and day one is the day after. So it's usually six days at the minimum once you're negative, then you're you're able to you know to not be quarantined. So typically, we're testing residents on day six, if you will, but they need to quarantine day five days after the first day of being positive. Okay, so I have a couple submitted questions. Um, one was asking about. Um, the RSV um, vaccination, and uh, that's an, kind of a newer virus that we're talking about. I tried to attempt to find out if we're gonna offer the vaccine for RSV here. I did not get an answer yet because Cheryl was in the process of visiting with patients, so I will find out, and once we know which vaccines we're providing, we'll let you know. I know we're gonna do the flu, I know we're gonna offer the COVID booster once that comes out, but the RSV vaccination, I don't know as of yet. I know there is a vaccine, but I don't know um, if we'll be able to offer it here. Um, another resident asked about the dogs that we have on property, concerned that we're not following the rules. Um, I'm 
kind of condensing the question, uh, whether or not dogs are allowed to live on all floors or just the first floor, have we changed our practices, and um, now it's time to enforce uh, the practices we have. So I'm gonna just share the guidelines that we have. Um, dogs um, and cats must have current vaccinations. Uh, pet owners are responsible for making provisions during their absence. So uh, um, if they have to go to the hospital for a reason, they need to have you know, pet sitting arrangements um, ahead of time. Animals should be well groomed. They should be free from fleas, pests, or odors. Resident um, owners are asked to pick up after, them, after the dog and um, dogs are not permitted on the furniture in the lobby or common areas. And we ask that dogs don't go into eating venues, including the bistro. And we also prefer that dogs are not in our main lobby or clubhouse. Now, obviously, if you live in building B and you're taking your dog up to Willowbrook Court for a visit, you're gonna have to go through the clubhouse. But we don't expect you to sit and stay in the clubhouse. We expect that you would continue on um, wherever you're going. But we ask that you go out, if you're going outside, you go outside from the building and not through the main clubhouse. Um, we also ask that dogs be leashed um, when in common areas or walking on campus. And dogs should not be a nuisance to neighbors. So you know, excessive barking or um, barking during sleeping hours, that would be like a nuisance um, example. Any questions on that? Okay. Hi, I have a question about the uh, clinic. It, will it ever be open even one day or two days on a weekend or is that a fait accompli? Um, it will never be open on the weekends. The question is, will the wellness clinic ever be open Saturday or Sundays? And it will not be open on the weekdays. Think of our clinic as a doctor's office or a primary care office. Um, and we do have office hours Monday through Friday. Thank you. I have, I have a question about the uh, bistro. We're coming to the end of the month and I have a lot of makeup meals. Am I allowed to give some of them to a friend? So how you pick up your meals, Helene, and how you hand off that container is between you and... No, but am I allowed to give one or two to a friend if I have so many and I know I'm not gonna make up all of I them mean, we're, we because it's too close to the end of the month? We should not be involved in that, but if your friend comes down and says, I'm picking up my meal, or Helene's meal for her, you know, that's between okay. you and your well, friend. Yeah. But we, we can't say yes. Also, you know, I'm a dog owner and I've been here for many years. I don't know how acts call themselves dog friendly community when you have so many restrictions. You know, I have little dogs, they're very social. They have to stay in the apartment. They can never be near anybody. They're four pounds each. I mean, what would be wrong? The people love them. If I came to the lobby and I carried them, I mean, I don't understand why there are so many rules about a dog-friendly community. I don't plan to put them on the carpet, but I certainly, you know, I would hold them and have people look at them. I, I dress them and I know people used to love to see them. Uh, I feel, you know, it's, it's very restrictive. My dogs are very social, they love people, and I don't understand why we have all these rules. Because not everyone loves dogs, I hate to say it. I, I love dogs, but not everyone is a dog lover. And so we have to balance harmony in the community and, um, you know, the clubhouse is more of a formal, area and if you uh, my recommendation is during the cooler months that maybe you meet those individuals outside maybe find a bench by the front door or, or wherever and individuals can stop and you know love on your animals but we do have to weigh 
the har you know, we want a harmonious environment and not everyone loves animals. And so we have to be ever so careful that we, I believe we're pet friendly, but we do have restrictions. And I would say our restric restrictions aren't as restrictive as some communities, not retirement communities, but some HOA communities that are local. I know that someone shared that if you don't pick up your, you know, your mess on the grounds that they DNA test, I don't know, if I, is that true? Um, I mean, we are never going to do that. <laughs> we are not going to do that. But my point is that I think some communities locally are even more restrictive. We have another question. Okay. Yes, in regard to the telephone that you said is in the back of the room yes. now, uh, is there a phone number number that is going to be there for security, a number for the desk, yes, a number we'll, for the... We'll put a label on there. But I want to know, yes, yes, so the people would know what numbers to dial. Great, thank you. Great idea. Is there a phone directory back there, Helen, by chance? We, we can put one there. Good idea. Okay. We have another question, Susan. Okay. Yes. Speaking of the directory, how often do you issue a new one? I asked Marty, and she said two times a year. Yeah. Is it possible to do it every three months? Because you have a lot of changes. Right. It's very laborious, so probably not. What I would recommend, I believe, and Marty and Alan can correct me, I believe we announce new residents when they move in and we have their phone number. Do we post that anywhere? Not their phone number. Okay. Separate sheet? No. Okay. In the directory. Okay. Okay. So, so internally, our our team internally that serves the residents receive the phone number, but we don't post it anywhere for residents. My recommendation is, as you see a new resident move in, um, you can always stop at the front desk and get their phone number if you're interested in inviting them to dinner, or if, if you met them and really connected. You can stop and get their phone number from us and then put it in your directory. But I would, I would say we won't go to every three months. It's just very time consuming. Helene, hold on. Thank you. The phone in the A lobby does not work. I know there isn't a phone in the card room. I don't see any phones around that area. And if there is an emergency, we do need to have, you know, uh, communication with the front desk. That phone doesn't work. Okay, yes, well, I'm That's aware. In the a lobby. We'll get it fixed. I'm aware, thank you. Okay, and then I had one, before we go to the next question, I had one other um, submitted question. I'm just gonna read. Over the last few months, we've seen some residents trashing the laundry rooms. Um, construction materials have been stuffed in the recycle bins or dumped on the floor, and there's total disregard for rules associated with recycling bins. The laundry tubs have been left with debris from cleaning vacuum cleaners, and green food containers are being left on the table. So um, my recommendation is, you know, we're, we all are responsible for picking up after ourselves, and, and if you have a green container, when you come down, down to the dining room, please just bring it down with you. Don't put it in the laundry rooms. I, it's everyone's job to keep our community um, beautiful and um, attractive, and then if you also have private help, help in the home, remind them as well that they're in someone's home and even the common areas we got to keep that in mind that we're in a, someone's home and we have to pick up after ourselves. Mickey? That was a perfect introduction for what I'm going about to say. I, as a resident, I would like for the residents and the sta you as a st staff to come up with a plan as how we can improve 
and become the best that we can, both as residents and staff. So, do you, so that's a lot. Um, that's a big. <laughs> that's a lot to to digest. Do you have some examples? How what you mean by that? Because I know I can be a much better director, and I know I can be a better human being, but. Those steps, uh, you know, there's a journey I'm on. Yeah, yes, there are a few. I walk, the, I walk around, I see lights on where no, there's nobody there, lights in the card rooms all night, people don't turn them out. They, it, there is just a lot, number one, there's a lot of waste. Mm -hmm. Number two, we need to form a few more clubs, particularly that might, might be able to do things in the afternoon for those people who aren't card players. Those are just a couple of them. There are, I'm sure if the staff and the residents think about it, there are many things that we could do together. Great, thank you. I, I think the what The main thing is to do it together. Thank you. I think what I'm hearing, I translate what you just said as being good citizens of Edgewater and doing our part to make this community the very nicest community either to work in or to live in. And I think that's great. Thank you. Yes, I do. Uh, hello, I'm a new member, about two and a half, three weeks, Brenda. I'm not in the directory. So I'm wondering if you could have every three months an addendum just for the new members. Huh. So they have their, their phone number and their uh, room number. Marty, somewhere. what do you think of that? If we did a page a every page addendum, quarter that we would send out. Okay, good idea, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right, the last thing I just wanted to mention and then I think we'll take any more questions that you have, but the main dining room, uh, we are rolling out a family or a restaurant style menu as I mentioned last month and some residents had reservations on that. We, I have reviewed it and the culinary team has reviewed it. We're gonna now pick a small group of residents to review it and tear it apart. And then we're gonna have the culinary committee review it and have the final look at, look at the, the new menu. And so that's where we're at. So we're, we're plugging away. Um, the next step will be to, to handpick a group of residents to look at it, and then it will go to the culinary committee. Okay, right. uh, have... <clears throat> uh, Susan, do you have an occupancy report? Elliot, I forgot to do that. I'm so sorry. I, I know that's important to you, and I meant to do that, and I, it's in my, um, it's actually here, but I did not update it. Last month, we were around 86% occupied with, uh, let's see, 17 apartments that have been selected or committed. So the total last month was 92% occupied when you combine those individuals ready to move in. I suspect we're around 92% still, and I'm so sorry, when we do the minutes in writing, I will make sure that's up, updated. I will look at it and update for this month. Thank you. Back to the RSV vaccination. They will be available after October. Senior citizens will be granted a priority because they'll be in short supply initially. Mm. So that if you could contact corporate to find out whether they're getting their application in early, we would appreciate it. Perfect, thank you, buddy. Okay, Mary Lou had a, okay, Mary Lou had a comment. Hello, everybody. Everybody enjoyed Caribbean night and it was really wonderful. Okay. One, two, a lot of people decided last minute to attend. That really is, we try to give you a deadline that is timely because the kitchen has to get product. 
And all of a sudden, we went from 168 people to 197 people to 222 people the day of the party. That is really, really stressful all around. I mean, it was a happy party, and we managed it, and everybody did it. And it took a little longer to get some of the food out because it had to be scrounged around. Um, I mean, they always have some extra, but we were really over extra. So if you don't think you want to come to one of these things, think of how many people came who didn't want to come and had a wonderful time. So try and answer us. We'll try and extend the deadline two or three days more when you have to have your answer in. But that time is necessary to prepare. That's a good point. And we, you know, we don't want to exclude people, but at the same time, we have to prepare. So um, I, we'll make sure that we have a hard, you know, deadline, and we'll make sure we announce that so that people who are on the fence will get, you know. Yes, that's hard. So apparently 25 people said, I'm going to come tonight, the day of. And I'm glad we had enough food, but some nights we might not. So we really, those special events, we do try to plan properly so that everyone who comes really has a great time. So a uh, good point that please sign up according to the deadline. Ellen? Plan on coming, everybody. We always have a good time when we're together. Ellen? If they haven't answered by a certain date, and Mary Lou's absolutely right, then they should eat in the bistro right. because the bistro is, in, is open yeah. when they have special occasions. And, you know, as we get have more of these special events, I think residents will become more attuned to following that, those, you know, those deadlines for signing up. So just a friendly reminder to, to sign up according to the deadline. Hi. Hi. I certainly believe that no one should be allowed in the dining room for a special event on the day of. I think our residents need to heed the deadlines and be good citizens and not cause all the stress that accompany latecomers. And, and, and there's a balance, I agree. And, you know, we, we just want everyone to enjoy the event. So we know there's a balance. Mary Lou's bringing up a good point. Toby's adding to that and Ellen. And we'll, in the future, try to extend the deadline to closer to the event and then really do a last-minute um, reminder, please, you won't be able to be added next week. Sign up by Friday or whatever the day is. So we'll... We'll try to do reminders that get people really committed to attending by the deadline. We, we actually had somebody who just decided to come in anyway, even though she was told there was no space. Okay. So, I mean, <laughs> no, we weren't going that far. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Like I said, just come, everybody, plan on coming. We, they, we do this for all of you, the whole entire community. So I would love to see everybody there and just plan on it. Then if something happens, we cancel. But just plan on coming. We always have a good yeah, time. That's a good point. Sign up, and if you need to cancel, cancel by the deadline. And Helene has one last comment or question, and then we're going we're gonna to end. She's going to bring you the mic, Come Helene. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I know that people don't sign up, particularly fairly new people, because they don't have a table. And they are not, I try to explain, you know, f fill out the form, they will put you at a table. They are not comfortable doing that. I think that you should have one table available. You did? All right, well, I guess we need to let people know you know, it's okay if you don't have a table. You're still invited, and you could come. And we'll we'll assign you to a table. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't perfect. Know about that. Okay. Well, we'll it make sure. Now. We had to make it last second because of all the additional people we had. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we we'll make sure we're clear in our 
announcement. And I, but it was such a wonderful night. Thank you again. And um, just everyone enjoyed it. And I want to uh, thank you for coming today and rearranging your um, calendar to be here today. I appreciate it. And I'm so thankful my mask is off um, so that I can better communicate with you. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Susan, we have oh, a we raffle. Have the raffle. Okay. Alan, do you want to pick the number? Sure. Marty has the number. So okay. we have our coasters Ooh. for a raffle, and the number is? The number is, I can't see. <laughs> Zero four four two two two. Who is the lucky winner? Two two two. The last three numbers are two two two. Poo poo poo. Two two two. <laughs> we might have to re right. do one more. We're gonna pull another. Okay. Yes. Okay. We are. The last two. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Last three are two one nine. Two one nine. Come on, Eileen. Who's the lucky winner? <laughs> All Yay, right, Richard. All right. All right, well, have a great weekend. Thanks again.